Well, greetings and salutations, everyone, and happy President's Day. Today, we are still going to be on that highway from state to state alphabetical dogman subscriber submissions. So, from Virginia, we are going to head clear across the country to Washington State. Before we get there, though, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and my merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. The links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description as well. My merch displayed directly under this video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters Volume 1, 2, and 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeffrey Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. The links to those are also in the description as well. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's take that ride to Washington State, shall we? Today's first Washington State subscriber submission. Hey Jeff, I was asked by one of your listeners to tell you my story and maybe you would narrate it. I'm an empath and for those of you who do not know what an empath is, we are sensitive things around us. People's emotions tend to be introverts. Being in busy places drives us crazy. That is partially why I chose to live out in the woods. I've talked to you just a little before and told you I think there is something in the woods by my house. Well, I know there is, but I don't know exactly what it is. A little background, my name is LM. I am a 55-year-old woman from a small Washington town called Tano. I live in Florida where my youngest daughter lives. I raised two daughters on an acre of land I had purchased in the lake community called Tempo Lake. I lived there comfortably for 25 years. Things were normal. We had no fear of the woods. My girls spent a lot of time playing and exploring those woods. My land is connected to a joint Fort Lewis Army and McCord Air Force Base. We had around deer, cougar, coyote, bear, you name what normally lives in the woods and we had it. But nothing that put a scare into us. Back in 2015, I met a man who I fell deeply in love with. I moved out of my house and to Federal Way, Washington to marry him. My oldest daughter and her family were staying in my home to take care of it. I lost him a year and nine days after our wedding to small cell lung cancer. Needless to say, his kids wanted the house and since my oldest daughter and her family were now living in mine, I went to stay with a friend for a while. It was decided that I would have built a small barn-like home for myself on the property and my daughter and her family would remain in the big house since I didn't need that much room anymore. I moved into the house after the frame was completed and the drywall was completed in the living room and downstairs area. Upstairs, I had a nice loft bedroom that looked down over the living room and front door. I used the restroom and kitchen in the main house while I was waiting for my house to be completed. From the back door of the main house to the front door of my tiny home was 150 feet. My property was completely surrounded by woods. We used to have all kinds of bonfires, loud music all the time there. We even had my youngest daughter's wedding in my backyard. When I moved back to the property, there was a new feeling in the woods. I used to be so comfortable there, but... Just a short walk from the big house to the little house would now creep me out. I always felt like I had eyes on me. I had a rooster whose name was Joe and he'd follow me around like a dog. He would come in my house and spend time with me, sit on the porch waiting for me, and he slept on the porch. One night I was upstairs lying in bed watching TV with my dog Loki. He's a small dog, but he thinks he is a big dog. He was lying next to me and he starts to growl and he keeps looking down at the door. I peek over, but I couldn't see anything downstairs through the front window, so I went back to watching TV. Then my dog starts growling and barking again. I muted the TV and listened, but I heard nothing. So I went back to watching TV and lying in bed. A few minutes later, Loki was out of bed growling again, and then it happened. A loud bang on my front door hard enough that it pushed my door open by a few inches. 
I got creeped out and called my brother, who is now living in my big house since my daughter and her family moved to Montana. And he came out immediately to check it out. We walked around the property, but it was so dark we didn't find anything but heard a loud crunching of branches breaking in the woods. We searched and didn't see anything. The next morning, we found some scat outside of my home. It looked like a combination of bear and human. We ignored it and just thought it was a bear wandering around at night. A few days later, I was upstairs watching TV again and the same thing happened. Dog growling, loud bang on the door. This time, my door was double bolted and did not open, but the knock was loud. Again, my friend Carla and I walked around the yard, but we didn't find anything. But yet again, we were creeped out. The hair was standing on the back of our necks, loud branches breaking in the woods as if something was running away. It felt like we were being watched. Something was watching our every move. I couldn't take it. I went back to my house and crawled under the covers and spent the night listening for any sound I could hear. The next day, I covered all of my windows with dark paper so no one could see inside or out. I would say it was a week after the second incident that I woke up to a loud cry from my rooster, Joe. I jumped out of bed and called Carla again and we went searching the yard for Joe. Normally, he came as soon as I called him, but this time he did not. We walked out to the quarter acre that joined my three-quarter acre and found some feathers, but no Joe. We walked around for about an hour, didn't find anything. I was freaked out and very upset about Joe. My senses were heightened and I felt as if we were being observed by something in the woods. After the loss of Joe, I moved out of the little house into the living room of the big house. Going outside at night for me was a no-go. I moved here to Florida because my daughter had asked me to. It was a relief to get away from whatever was banging on my door and took my rooster. I never saw what it was, but I know there was something watching me, waiting for someone to walk into its trap. Your friend, LM. And then she put this little kind of quote that I thought was really cool. A bird doesn't sing because it has a voice, it sings because it has a song. Tonight's second Washington State subscriber submission. Hey Jeff, what's up brother? So about 15 years ago, I was maybe 12 or 13, my uncle and aunt, as well as some family friends, had planned a camping trip. We all drove together in a pretty decent sized RV, this is in the state of Washington, along old Sonomish Road. It's pretty wooded. We get to the property of who I guess is my aunt's relatives. By the time we arrived, it's already dusk. So we drive out past the house into this large field that has woods on one side and a river on the other. To get to the river, there was a 10 foot wide, 30 foot long slope on either side was very thick brush on a particular vertical dropped off. Before it got dark, we all made a fire down on the bank of the river. After an hour or so of relaxing by the fire and roasting hot dogs, everyone beside me had retreated back to the RV for some beers. I decided to stay by the fire and listen to the sounds of the river. At this point, it's practically pitch black, overcast, blackout, most of the light of the moon. The only light was that of the fire, which, as you know, blinds you more than it illuminates your surroundings. Next to the bottom of the slope that leads back up to the field was a kind of lean-to shelter made out of metal poles and a tarp that held firewood. Suddenly, the lean-to started to rustle and stopped. I stared at it, trying to identify the source of the noise. After a few seconds, it started rustling again, but now I was starting to get freaked out. I called my uncle's name and then my family friend. Instead of a response, the tarps just continued to shake. Now I was really freaked out. I picked the rock up and chucked it at the shelter. In response, it shook more violently. Now I'm staring to doubt that. Now I'm starting to doubt that it was my uncle messing with me, and I start throwing more rocks because I wanted him to come out and stop scaring me. Something behind or in back of the shelter let out a growl. 
I don't really know how to describe it, nasally and guttural. It sounded like a noise you would make as a joke until you heard it again. The tones and pitch were inhuman. After hearing it a second time, my blood ran cold. I froze. I just stood there with a rock in my hand, unsure of what to do. I think one of the rocks I threw may have hit whatever the hell it was because it sounded furious and did not stop its yelling or however you would describe the sounds it was making. Then the bushes and small trees from the bottom of the embankment started to rustle and it scaled the damn near 20 foot wall of thick vegetation and sticker bushes all the way to the top in only a few seconds. I could make out the movement of brush the whole way it went, but I couldn't see its actual outline. After the thing got to the top, it continued to roar or yell and started throwing handfuls of dirt and grass into the air. After a few seconds of this, and then everything went silent, I stood in the same position, frozen, rock poised to throw, heart beating out of my chest. Remaining by the fire for a few more moments, I waited and listened for any noises. And after not hearing anything else, I ran back to the RV as fast as I could. Pulling that door open, I practically dove into the safety of the vehicle. Everyone was sitting around drinking beers and playing cards. They all turned their heads to look at me, my eyes wide, my breathing heavy. I tried to explain what happened. I guess they thought I was messing around because nobody took me serious at all. Later in the night, after my uncle and one of his buddies had a pretty good buzz on, they thought it would be fun to go check the area and see if they could hear any weird stuff. Wanting to prove to myself and also not wanting to be left behind, I figured I'd be safe with them and went along. As we went out into the field, a distant kind of howl rang out from pretty far away. It didn't necessarily sound like a wolf, but deeper in a strange pitch. Pretty freaky, but rather far away. Then as we were walking around, there was a crashing like heavy footsteps in the woods about 200 feet from the RV. They started walking towards the noise quietly. Reluctantly, I followed. About 30 feet away, the crashing about stopped. We all just crouched and listened. They started whispering to each other, speculating on what it was. Their idea of whispering was the drunken, almost yelling kind you hear people doing in the movies. All of a sudden, a huge crash in the tree line ahead of us echoed out through the silent night. I don't know what it was, but it sounded like someone had felled a tree. They took off running, and believe me, so did I. Once we made it back to the RV, my uncle locked the door and suggested nobody go back outside for the night. That was advice we all followed. I'm still not sure what it was out there that night, but my aunt later told me that when she was a kid in that same area, she was walking home from school one day and happened to look up the hill and saw a towering figure spreading two decent-sized trees apart and peering out at her through the middle, before releasing them and disappearing back into the woods. Today's fourth Washington State subscriber submission. Hi, first I have to say I love your channel. Well, my encounter takes place in Orcas Island. That's in Washington. I live in Oklahoma and have never experienced anything like this at home. Went to the Orca Island for my stepbrother's wedding, supposed to be a great time. I did enjoy this trip up until my encounter. Okay, here goes. This place was beautiful my first time going. It had a gorgeous huge trees right by the ocean. There were deer everywhere. Even driving down the road, the deer were eating grass, not afraid of people. I just couldn't believe how much I loved it here. The night of the wedding was great. We all had a fun time and we were worn out from dancing and celebrating but didn't drink and do drugs, so I was sober and didn't imagine this even though I wish I did. Going back to the place I was staying, kind of like a little cottage or condo, had a garden and apple trees and the deer all around. I decided to step outside to this bench and smoke a cigarette, looking up at the beautiful shining bright stars in the sky, thinking what a great night it was. And then I hear this crackling like branches breaking And I'm thinking, it's got to be a deer. So I look over by these two apple trees where the sound is coming from. 
And it's a very dark outside. Only the moon and stars are shining. I can only make out this dark, big shadow. So I walk a little closer trying to see better. Mind you, I'm thinking it's a deer. And then I hear this very low, deep guttural growl. I freeze with fear thinking, what is this? Because it's no deer. And then I see this face I will never forget. Looks like a dog or a wolf face, and it's massive with pointed ears and yellow eyes and huge, sharp white teeth. And it's looking right at me, growling. It was black, and what I could see of its body during this short time was muscles like a bodybuilder. I guess you could say I was frozen in fear. I wanted to move and run, but I could not. As I'm standing there looking at this creature, it takes a step towards me and starts growling more lying its ears back on its head and then pulling its lip back, revealing even more huge, sharp teeth. Kind of like a dog does when it's angry or going to attack. I came out of my trance and just ran for my life back to my room, which was not far, not knowing if this thing gave chase or if I will die, and I am happy to say I didn't. I made it inside my room and slammed the door and locked all the locks, although no door and amount of locks would have stopped this beast if it really wanted to come after me. I did not sleep at all that night. I was happy to be going home the next morning, so I didn't have to stay another night there and worry about the future encounters with this, I guess, dog man. I have heard your stories and others talk about their encounters, but until you actually had one and know these creatures are real and out there in the world, it's a whole other experience entirely. And wouldn't wish it upon anyone because you can't unsee this or forget about it. So, everyone, be careful out there. You never know when something might run into you and you into it. Also, I didn't smell any strange smells like people say. Just a lot of nightmares, and this happened September of 2019, and to this day, I still have nightmares about it. That face, I think, will haunt me forever. Thank you for sharing this, Jeff. Tonight's final Washington State subscriber submission. Hey, Jeff. Now that I look back on it, I think it all started last year when my family and I went camping at Trout Lake and Gifford Pinkett National Forest, close to Mount Adams. Clyde Lewis, who does a show on the radio from Portland, Oregon, called it Ground Zero, was talking about Mount Adams and UFO activity there, is one of the top UFO hotspots in the U.S. We have always been obsessed with UFOs and anything alien, but we got a totally different aspect of the paranormal up there. It was September, and we were excited to get away. We packed our little boat and jeep and headed out. The energy was weird there and the lake was shallow. Not very exciting. My husband got a ticket for not having a whistle, which was weird. And the ground seemed hollow and it echoed. My kids and I went for a hike but regretted it because we felt like something was watching us. There were knocked down trees, maiden crosses everywhere and the forest was sick and the vibe was weird. We all started fighting for no reason. After a few minutes, we decided to go back. The people there seemed strange, so we decided just to eat and hang out at our campsite. The kids fell asleep, and me and my husband went to the lake, and there was a weird orb in the sky, super bright orange, and it was flying weird, then disappeared. We were excited. We went back to camp, and it was dark. That's when the strange howling started. It came from two different directions like they were talking to each other. It was loud and lasted about 45 minutes the first time. The second happened about 15 minutes at about two in the morning. We fell asleep after and around four in the morning, I woke up terrified with sleep paralysis. I couldn't move. I had the first nightmare I ever had in my life about a witch who was possessing my whole family to attack me at the end of the nightmare. My husband sitting at the picnic table and he was reaching over, grabbing his neck, my neck choking me. As soon as I could move, I told my husband, there's a witch here. He said, just be quiet about it until morning and don't talk about it till 
It's light out. It scared me so bad I couldn't stay there. We had to go to another campground two miles up the mount mountain called Forlorn Lakes. We get there and take the little boat on one of the five lakes there. They're shallow, only about six feet deep. Completely in the middle of the mountains, only a few people there. Well, it was dusk and these owls started circling us on the lake and flew at us, basically trying to make us leave. So we did and left in the morning. Well, our lives have not been the same since. We had bad luck after bad luck. We got our Jeep stolen two days before we were moving to Oregon from Washington. And it had everything in it, including birth certificates, IDs, school transcripts, our phones, $500 in money. We had $1,500 saved up and moved to move and ended up having to spend it on another vehicle. We already gave our notice to our landlord, my husband's job, so... We were screwed to say the least. Our only option at this point was to take our camper and go to the campgrounds until we could save money. It's very expensive in Washington and we knew nobody here. I have no family and my husband's family is in Idaho. You can only stay 20 days at each state park so we were glad there were two within a 10 miles from each other. We ended up at Paradise Point in Washington and it was going okay until the last 10 days. I got deathly sick out of nowhere for nearly nine days, hallucinating, fever, with extreme pain. I could barely walk or stay awake. I was not nauseous, but I was starving, it seemed like. I ate the entire time, which was strange. I had anger spouts, and my heart was pounding, and I felt like I was going to die. I went to the hospital in the ambulance, and they didn't know what was wrong both times. Two days later, I woke up, and it was over. The night I had the dream about the owl faces that were evil looking and they were flying at my face each time, a different evil owl face. I told my husband about it. It wasn't scary, more weird. We moved our camper to Battleground Lake and this was in December of 2017. Around the 20th is when it started. The forest felt strange this time. It was a weird energy in the air. There were owls hooting all night long, and I mean loud, like echoing for hours, then started the howling, almost identical to Trout Lake howling. I was thinking, what were the odds? I looked it up on Google to see if anyone else had ever heard these, and maybe someone had posted the recordings on YouTube, and there it was, people had been hearing howls and assumed it was Bigfoot. Well, I'm not so sure it was Bigfoot now. Around the 23rd of December, this old man showed up and set up this weird shelter with a clear tarp. Keep in mind, it's freezing here at this time. He looked about 75 and drove a black Xterra. We didn't really think anything of it at first. Well, that night after my husband left me and the kids, we were watching TV in the tent camper. And this overwhelming sense of fear came over me like I'd never felt before. I looked at my 12-year-old daughter and she could feel it as well. The other kids were oblivious at first, then the howling started. This time it was bone chilling and it was loud, but like a barking now and it went on for hours. The lake was lit up with it. It was freezing cold and then there was these owls and this time it seemed like something was mimicking the owls. We just sat there in fear. We were too scared to open the door to go pee and it felt like something was outside. It went on until about five in the morning, and up there it's darker than dark than it is anywhere in town. It gets dark around four and stays dark till six or seven in the morning. When my husband got back from work, I told him about it. He said that when he was down by the entrance getting the shower tokens, he had this weird sense of fear and felt like running the car My husband is a big guy and doesn't scare easy. The next night was even worse. We had gone to Portland that morning and I remember this car at the dollar store. It was an old car and muscle car. I thought it was pretty, but before we left Portland, my husband decided to offer a man a tarp because we felt bad it was so cold. The old man who told my husband no and said he was there brushing up on his survival skills and only using what he could find. He kept trying to offer my husband food, asking questions like how long we have been there. We said no and we left. When we came back, it was almost dark. That same car 
from the dollar store. I swear I had seen it come through the entrance. I was freaked out given the energy of the place and what happened the night before. We dropped the kids off at the camper and went down to get some tokens for the shower. We came back up and my husband left for work. It was around 11 at night. The howling started again. It only started after my husband left. At Battleground Lake, they also have some rustic cabins that you can rent in that night till around 6 in the morning. Not only was the howling, but there was someone who kept coughing and slamming a car door. This went on for hours. Cough, slam, cough, slam, cough, slam, then the owls. The next day before my husband left for work, I asked him to take me down to get more shower tokens. And we saw the car again. This time we kind of chased it through the entrance just to see if we could get the license plate number. And it sped up and was gone. We couldn't catch it. As we were driving back up to the campsite, we saw bright flashing walking around the campground. So we decided to park somewhere and watch to see who it was. Whoever it was was walking very fast. We saw the flashlight over by the camp, over by our campsite and finally a little bit closer. My husband had turned off the headlights earlier while the person who was walking turned off their flashlight when it got closer to the car for some reason. I got this intense feeling of terror. I was so scared I begged my husband to turn on the headlights. As soon as he did, we saw the old man. He had turned his head ever so slightly and its eyes shined a bright yellow like a cop's flashlight. The glare was intensely bright. It was supernatural. We both looked at each other in complete disbelief. It was almost as if he showed us on purpose and just kept walking into all of these campsites, definitely looking for something. He was no good for sure. I got back and started to research some things. I looked up anything that I could have possibly been. I looked up old man stalking campgrounds. I looked up anything that was associated. I came across a police sketch from a rainbow gathering in 2012 where a woman went missing. And it was the same man, even the same hat. But I started thinking about how he was walking and it was too fast for an old man. And he was waddling like abnormally, not like he was sick or disabled. He was also very tall. I'd calmed down a little bit and my husband went to work. We had got a new neighbor that day, and I was grateful because I didn't feel alone. That night was worse. It started the same way, the howling. Then there was the mimicking right by our camper. It was mimicking coughing, and then there was growling, but it was not a dog growl. It was low and weird. This time, the fear was intense. It hit me fast, my daughter as well. Besides the feeling of being watched... Something slapped the side of the camper, and it seemed like something was dragging its hands across it, and then something grabbed my daughter. She had been leaning up against the fabric of the tent camper. We were frozen in fear. The lights were bright inside the camper, and we just lied there. I had her next to me. We fell asleep listening to the mimicking of coughing. Not because we were tired, though. The weird part is the fear that we were feeling was coming to me in weird images, almost like messages that were pixelated. I can't explain it, but I felt like something was trying to communicate with me. Or I was picking up on somebody else's or something else's thoughts. I felt like it was feeding off of our fear. We woke up every morning drained and tired and grumpy, like it was causing this on purpose to create bad environment. The next night was really scary. First, my neighbor didn't seem the same. He looked different, like greasy and disheveled, very weird. And he was coughing almost like a mimicking we heard. Howling started again, but this time it didn't go on as long as the owls, only a short time. Then something started to mess with the tarp. It was lifted up and put down all night long. I had every weapon I had sitting on my lap. I had a machete and my aluminum bat. I had a torch, lighter fluid. I was ready this time. The fear was out of control. I was tired. My daughter was tired, but we didn't have anywhere else to go. And now that I look back on it, I swear I heard somebody say my name. I just shrugged it off because my name is really hard to say and had not even spoken my, to my neighbor, so I knew it wasn't him. The next day, the old man left. The howling stopped. It scared. I was still scared, but I think it was because the night before, two days later, the man went missing in the same forest about 20 miles away. 
All of this is connected through the Lewis River, both Paradise Point and Battleground Lake, and Larch Mountain, where the man went missing. I was only in the news for it was only in the news for two days, and all of the man's family had been there that night. He was only 30 years old. The man also went missing at Forlorn Lakes in November, and his clothes were found folded neatly. He was found naked. They said it was from cold, but I don't believe it was. Owls flew weird part of the sketch of the old man. The only name they had for him was Owl. I believe this man was a shapeshifter and had been stalking us. The nights before I got deathly ill, there was raccoons surrounding my tent. They were fighting and acting weird, growling at each other. They never came back after I was sick. The owls were connected to this situation and my dreams about the owls, I think they were telling me about what was happening. I have always been highly empath empathic and I think these creatures seek us out because we can feel their presence. They feed off our fear. I have never felt anything like that before in my life and never. Our lives have not been the same. We see its face everywhere and the eyes, the yellow glowing eyes. I believe there's a connection with all of these missing people and it has the ability, I believe, to mind control or persuade people to sleepwalk. I believe people who are empath are like food for this thing. All right, guys. Well, that was tonight's, today's Washington subscriber submissions. That encounter, I had spoke to her. I've had her on the channel. It was a long time ago, like three and a half years ago. This is insane. I cannot believe my channel is this old now. Um, and we're still going so good, aren't we, guys? I mean, we, we are banging it out. Anyway, something very evil was surrounding this poor woman and her family. I've got to reach out and see if she's okay. I remember I've talked to her for a while. Um, really decent person. I don't, I don't believe she you know, invited anything into her life at all. It was just really messed up. And I think she's on the right point because whatever was stalking that campground, I believe was the old man. And maybe it was a shapeshifter. Um, huh, definitely terrifying. Anyway, practice kindness. May the great spirit watch over us all. And May he guide us down that path we call life. Until later on tonight, my friends. Until later on tonight.